But first, and new at 6 o'clock, a decorated Navy SEAL under investigation for his second job in porn movies with his wife. Team 10 investigator Allison Ash with the story that's gone viral today. And Allison, the Navy takes this stuff very seriously. Oh yeah, they're taking this very seriously. The Union Tribune broke the story this morning. I've been checking with sources that verify the Naval Special Warfare Command has now launched a formal investigation. Chief Petty Officer John Schmidt is a public face on the SEALs scout team, but it's not his face that's getting him into trouble right now. The Navy SEALs train hard and take on sensitive and dangerous missions. They're expected to be above reproach and they're not supposed to moonlight in other jobs without command staff signing off on it. But reports have surfaced that Chief Petty Officer Joseph Schmidt has appeared in 30 porn movies in the past seven years using the name Jay Voom. In many, like this one we found online, a man who looks like Schmidt is involved in sexual activity with two women. His wife, Julie Schmidt, is not one of them, but she is a porn star who goes by the name Jules Jade. She posted this video on her Twitter page yesterday. It's beautiful here in San Diego. Look at the view off of my deck. It's a gorgeous day. Jules Jade once signed autographs at a Navy SEAL party, according to a retired SEAL who did not want to be identified. Friday, she tweeted, if anyone runs into an article about my family and I, a lot of things are twisted. On his LinkedIn page, Schmidt says he's the operations manager for the Navy SEAL scout team and a motivational speaker. His picture seen several times on the Navy's own website, but no mention of the other life he's accused of living away from the Navy SEALs. Schmidt lives in the East County. It looked like somebody was home when I went there, but nobody came to the gate. Nobody picked up the phone either. After 23 years as a SEAL, his retirement is just months away. And this is a new one. This, I mean, all these years of covering the Navy SEALs. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, this will be what, he rem what he'll be remembered for, possibly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And tonight we're hearing the 911 calls from the deadly school shooting in San Bernardino. We have an active shooter at North Park Elementary. At North Park Elementary School? Yes, uh, one of our teachers was shot. Okay, we're on our way. What's, hold on, hold on. Don't hang up, don't hang up. Well, that was the moment Cedric Anderson walked into a special ed class and opened fire on his wife, Karen Smith. She was killed along with eight-year-old Jonathan Martinez. Another student was shot but is recovering. And police released these tapes today. At one point, the dispatcher asks if the shooter is still on campus. The 911 caller says he is. I'm scared. I'm Ann State in the 10 News Live Center with a rather precarious situation going on in University City. The 10 News breaking news tracker is on the scene of a car in University City. Side swiped a house and part of the house has actually fallen on the car. Let's take the image full. You could get a better look yourself. This is happening in the 6,000 block of Regla. So basically, they don't want to move this car because they're afraid it'll affect the stability of the house. What happened is an older gentleman was backing up out of his driveway, kept going, went up into the neighbor's home and sideswiped the neighbor's house. Luckily, that homeowner was in the kitchen, so nobody hurt, but they're basically just sort of wait and see mode here. They don't want to move this car too fast until they are sure that they can shore up this home in University City. In the Ted News Live Center and State Ted News, back to you guys. I imagine they had to be waiting in the parking lot and just waited for someone to be out of sight. A quick trip to a gym at the UTC mall turns into a nightmare when Sharon Frank gets back to her car. As 10 News reporter Michael, found, Michael Chen found out a costly theft has sparked a woman's mission targeting thieves. The purse wasn't left in plain sight, but the thief still got it. Now its owner hoping to prevent others from falling victim. At Westfield UTC, a determined Sharon Frank trying to get the word out. I just wanted to let you know that I, to be careful about everything she lost. Credit card, passports, checkbook, oh cell phone. Just before six on a recent Wednesday morning, Frank and a friend parked in this lot and headed to 24 hour fitness on this occasion. But I'm usually so cautious. Frank left her purse. Immediately just, I put it down here. Tucked next to her seat, slightly hidden an hour later. I just came out to the car and, and it was 
All the glass was broken out. The front driver's side window in pieces on the ground. And I just was like, un it was unbelievable. Her purse gone. By the time she canceled her credit cards, the thief had charged about $700 at several stores. And I was mad at myself for making the mistake. And mad enough at the thief. Well, I'm just so angered. Frank embarked on a mission. This is the flyer I just made up at home. It says, warning, please be careful not to leave any personal items in your car. A warning delivered by a victim turned messenger. I think about all the other people that this would happen to, and I don't want it to happen. A goal she hopes to achieve. I want to give you a flyer. If others learn from her mistake. I'm just hoping that he won't have anything to steal that that we'll be protecting ourselves. Michael Jen, 10 News. Frank usually leaves her purse in her trunk, but police say that's also a bad idea because the thief will just open the trunk latch. And we pulled up this crime mapping site right here to give you a better idea of crime in this area. Within just a two mile radius of where that happened, we see assaults with serious injury, reports of vandalism, stolen cars, and even a fraud case. A road rage killer breaking down in court. <laughs> Darla Jackson sentenced today for running over a Navy sailor on the freeway. Almost two years ago, Navy Chief Petty Officer Zach Buab was riding his motorcycle on the 5 in the South Bay when the two got into a high-speed altercation. He kicked her door after she passed him in a dangerous manner. Jackson chased him and was on his rear bumper at 90 miles an hour when they ran into a traffic slowdown. She slammed into his bike and ran him over. Today, a judge sentenced Jackson to six years in prison. A possible would-be rapist on the loose. Police say a man jumped into a woman's car near SDSU and started touching her in the middle of the day. She was sitting in her car parked on Montezuma Road. When she was getting ready to go, a guy jumped into the passenger seat. He grabbed her and started touching her inappropriately. Police say that when the man saw people walking toward the car, he ran off. They believe he was trying to rape her and this woman who lives on Montezuma Road says she's now second guessing the area's safety. Um, yeah, the fact that it's at 11 a.m. is like absolutely terrible and like shouldn't be happening anywhere near college campus because I mean we go to school here. There's nowhere else for us to go or we live around here. Like Police are still looking for a white man in his 40s. He was last seen running down Montezuma Road near University Towers. Happening now, the parents of a murdered college student are hoping someone can find his killer. It's been 17 years since Andrew Moore was found dead in his apartment near City College. His motorcycle was also stolen that day, but was found the next month. Every year, his parents fly from Pennsylvania to San Diego to present a City College student with a scholarship in Andrew's name. There's a $56,000 reward for any information that may lead to an arrest. And new at 6 o'clock, California kindergarten is getting an A for immunization rates. Well, that's because school vaccination rates are the highest they've been in 15 years. A new report by the California Department of Public Health shows more than 95% of kindergartners in the current school year received all of their required shots. The new report also said the vaccination rates are partly up because of the new vaccination rates laws. New tonight, police unions in California pushing for a new law they say will increase transparency in use of force cases like this one. This video is of a Sacramento police officer tackling and beating a man accused of jaywalking. Now, police unions are pushing a bill they say will increase public disclosure when things like this happen. Assembly Bill 1428 would require police agencies and district attorneys to provide information to the public about cases involving use of force complaints against officers. Now, the ACLU is reacting to the proposal, saying the effort does little to actually peel back the curtain into police investigations of their own conduct. The bill will be heard on Tuesday. Lead testing results are starting to come in sooner than expected in San Diego schools. Schools in both San Diego and San Ysidro districts are some of the first in the state to test every school after three schools, including La Mirada, had drinking water test positive for lead and bacteria. La Murata Elementary just spent more than $10,000 to replace the fixtures as well as the water lines. As promised, San Diego Unified has posted the results on its website, all tested negative for copper, lead, and bacteria.